talk show for Filipinos here in America. Kababayan today, ako po yung inyong host na si G. Tanji. And we have our attorneys with us giving you immigration advice. Kasama natin si attorney Richard Lowe, who's its birthday tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, of course, attorney Allison Aquino Silva. Richard, could you briefly update us, please, on President Obama's executive action programs, the DAPA and the expanded DACA? Yes, well, uh, a couple of weeks ago on the 18th of April, there was oral arguments before the Supreme Court to determine what would be the next step, what the decision of the Supreme Court would be. As you know, the Supreme Court is comprised now of just eight members, so uh, the likelihood of a split vote is pretty high, uh, which would leave uh, the Texas law in place. But the oral arguments seem to go in favor of the government for the most part, so right now we still don't have an answer, but we should in June uh, have the opinion of the court. Okay, wonderful. We have John on the line with us from Los Angeles. John, and John ka ba? John? Yes, Ms. G. Uh, good afternoon po and good afternoon to our attorneys. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Ano po yung tanong ninyo ngayong hapon na to? Yes, I've been living here in the U.S. for eight years. Unfortunately, I, I, I came here as an H-2B visa. And after that, I didn't uh, have a chance to go in a... Uh, adjust my status. Until now, I I've been living like uh, out of status, but I'm paying my taxes. I just want to ask if there's any option for me to adjust my status to be able to work uh, legally, and uh, is there any restriction for me to visit an other state because I only have my passport with me? Okay. Um yeah, two very good questions. Um, generally speaking, if you enter in the United States in status and then you fall out of status, it makes it very difficult for you to adjust your status through an employer or something like that. You would need to have be married to a U.S. citizen. That would be the only way. So there's really no way forward through the employment-based uh, area. And as far as traveling when you are out of status, that's an excellent question. Um, and some states are more amenable to that. Well, it's easier. California doesn't really uh, check too much at the airports. But if you go close to the border, if you fly into Texas, you, certainly if you fly into El Paso, they're going to look at your passport. If you are, and the TSA is there, and the CBP is right next to them, and they look at the passport, and it's expired visa or at, you're out of status, they just hand the passport over to CBP. So you do have to be careful in which airports you fly into and what areas of the country you fly to because you could get flagged by TSA and turned over to CBP. Okay, don't go to Texas, mga kababayan, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we have Sylvia on the phone with us from Long Beach. Sylvia, nandiyan ka ba? Opo, andito po ako. Hello, Sylvia. Ano po yung tanong nyo ngayong hapon na to? Uh, ito po ang tanong ko. Mm. My husband has been granted a conditional permanent resident. Conditional now, permanent resident, okay. Yes. Now, my problem is... Is there be no hindrance if he wants to go home to the Philippines? Okay. Wonderful. Would there be a problem? Actually not. Uh, and uh, the conditional permanent resident is essentially granted to individuals who obtain their green card based on marriage to a U.S. citizen or a green card holder. If the marriage is still less than two years from the time that they're granted the green card. Um, it's immigration's way of ensuring it's a legitimate, bona fide marriage that you didn't just get into the marriage and then get divorced right away. Okay. And so the conditional permanent resident card has all of the same rights and privileges as a regular green card. And so you're free to travel, you're more than legal to work anywhere here in the United States. And so for her husband, he can certainly go ahead and travel safely outside the United States. Um, he wants to make sure, like all green card holders, not to be outside the U.S. more than six months or it may delay eligibility for U.S. citizenship, not to be outside the U.S. more than one year or you risk losing your green card. Okay, well, we are taking your calls live here in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, if you're watching us in Hawaii, we will be taking emails. If you have any questions, email us at kababayan at LA18. And uh, we will be taking our next call, si Saturnino, when we return. But before that, Ali, can you just talk to us briefly about the latest statistics on the F1 student visa? Because we have a lot of kababayans that come here to America that are 
under the student visa? Yes, immigration just released the latest statistics. So there are two types of student visas. There's the F1, which is the traditional student, mm -hmm. or the M, which are for vocational students. And right now in the U.S., there are about 1.2 million students, either Fs or Ms. And from this time last year, there's actually an increase of 6.2%, about 6% increase in the number of individuals who are here as students. And so that is certainly a path if, if individuals do want to take the opportunity opportunities that are available here in the United States. The good part with the student visas, especially the F, is that after you finish the program, oftentimes you can get an optional practical training card in order especially, to help you work. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially if you have STEM, right? <laughs> exactly, which uh, the majority, um, actually not the majority, but about 44% of students are actually from Asian countries. Wonderful, okay. All right, so we will be right back here on Kababayan today. We're taking your phone call when we return here on our show.